Welcome to the Tutor to You Sociology topic video on global development, focusing on economic measures of development. One of the most commonly used methods of measuring development is using economic measures. This is the method used by two of the more prominent agencies of development, the IMF and the World Bank. This is measured using gross national income or gross domestic product and can be measured as a whole nation or a per capita measurement that takes into account the number of people in the population. One of the reasons for measuring using a per capita measure is that nations with large populations, such as India and China, will naturally have higher gross national income as they have a larger workforce than less populous nations. And so using GNI per capita or GDP per capita gives a measure that can be compared more fairly and gives a better idea of a nation's true economic performance. However, this is not without its issues. According to the UN, the top 10 nations in terms of economic development are listed on the screen. The USA has long been the number one nation in terms of gross national income, with China's rise over the last 20 years placing it at number two. Japan comes in at third and is often used as an example of how development can be achieved through internal investment. Germany, the UK and France are fourth, fifth and sixth respectively, although fluctuations in currency values do lead to these positions changing from time to time. Whilst the emergence of India as an economic powerhouse sees it placed in seventh, with Italy, South Korea and Canada rounding out the top ten. These would be perceived, economically, as developed nations. The other end of the scale is dominated by the Pacific Islands, perhaps unsurprisingly given their small populations, with many nations having smaller national incomes than large companies, although that is not exclusive to the bottom end of GNI rankings. Another way in which economic measures are used is through GNI per capita. Figures from the UN show a very different picture once a nation's population is taken into account, with some surprising names at the top of the rankings. Macau, an administrative region of China, tops the list, while Singapore comes in at third. Qatar, host of the 2022 World Cup, comes in at second, and another oil-producing nation, the United Arab Emirates, comes in quite high at ninth. Other nations in the top ten include Bermuda, Luxembourg, Switzerland and Ireland, all of which offer significant tax breaks for companies. For example, many UK companies register their office in Ireland, which contributes to their gross national income, as it offers significantly cheaper tax rates than the UK. What is interesting about this measure is that none of the top 10 countries based on GNI are listed in the top 10 for GNI per capita. For example, the USA ranked number one for gross national income, but it only comes in at 11th, whilst European nations Germany and France also rank in the top 25. Canada and the UK come in at 26th and 27th respectively, followed by nations such as Japan, South Korea and Italy. What is most notable is the low positioning of both China and India, whilst despite having high gross national incomes, they're ranked at 77th and 134th respectively when factoring in the population, which hints that perhaps they are not as developed as initially suggested. Another economic measure is the Gini coefficient, named after Italian economist Corrado Gini, it looks at inequality in a nation and allocates a score out of 100 for inequality in society, with 100 being the most unequal, while lower scores show greater equality. Perhaps unsurprisingly, nations that have only recently moved to capitalist economies or have social democratic principles are seen as being the most equal, with formerly communist states Slovenia, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Belarus, Moldova, Ukraine and Azerbaijan all in the top 10. In comparison, South Africa is the most unequal society in the Gini coefficient rankings, with a score of 63. There are many problems with using purely economic measures, however, as measures such as GNI do not account for the distribution of income. In many societies, wealth is unevenly distributed and concentrated into the hands of the elites in society. Economic measures also fail to take into account hidden economies that contribute to an individual's economic situation. Many people in developing nations have employment that does not contribute to gross national income, 
whether through subsistence farming and agriculture, black markets or informal employment. A final problem is that these measures are based upon Western currencies, which means that fluctuations in a nation's currency caused by instability, conflict or poor governance can make a nation's economic progress look worse. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on global development, focusing on economic measurements. Thanks for watching.